In this video I'm gonna show you how I reverse engineered the front panel of the Go4 NPS 1601 power supply. First I'll show you the method I used for reverse engineering and then I'll show you the results I got. This is in my opinion the best power supply you can get in the $50 range. If you'd like to know more about that I did a review in Volog 255. I'll put a link to that at the end of this video. Why did I decide to reverse engineer the front panel of this power supply you might ask? Well, it was a topic I had on my to-do list ever since I got this unit because I feel like the user interface on this is not as nice as it could be if it had a color TFT display to show more info than what you get on these small 7 segment displays. And I'm not just talking about improving visibility because you could do that just by uh, increasing the brightness on these displays by maybe using some brighter ones and I'm talking about showing more data like cal calculated wattage or capacity showing set current and voltage at the same time with actual current and voltage measurements you know the kind of info you get on the more expensive Ryden power supply but hopefully in a better color scheme in contrast I'll show you something that is inexpensive the prototype PCBs that you can order from jlcpcb.com for just two dollars you can pick any solar mask color with no additional cost and if you need those boards professionally assembled they also offer an affordable SMT assembly service definitely worth checking them out. So obviously I started this project by taking apart the power supply and the front panel is made up from two PCBs stacked together one that holds the seven segment display the tactile switches and associated multiplexing circuitry and a second PCB on the back which actually does the control job. We're not interested in the 7 segment display board because we have a separate control board and all we need to know is how this is handling the measurements of voltage and current and how this uh, is controlling the power supply using that feedback. I had to uh, separate these two boards to desolder them and I don't have a video of doing that but I just used my uh, desoldering gun it was a, a two minute job to work on these uh, pin headers and then when I had the two boards separated I took some pictures of the front and back of the control board so I can later edit and process the images on my computer. Ideally for this step you want to use a scanner to get some flat images of the PCB which would help a lot later when overlaying these images. However in my case I had some large components which I didn't want to desolder to still have a functional PCB so I took some pictures with my phone as flat as I could. The next step was to edit these images. You can use any software that does image anything. The trick is to mirror the bottom layer image and overlay the top layer on top of that so it starts to look like the real PCB observed from the top. At the same time I fired up my favorite PCB layout software KiCad and started playing the components I identified on this board. The STM microcontroller, the op-amp, MOSFETs and various passives. The technique I used involves tracing connections between components and marking those on the PCB image at the same time which would indicate they have been wired in the schematic editor. I used red lines for top side connections and blue lines for bottom side connections. I started tracing from the microcontroller pins and when the image was not clear enough I used the continuity buzzer on a multimeter to confirm the connections. Whenever I reached a via I was switching the top layer visibility and alternating between top and bottom side image to see where that trace connected to. Tracks located under components can also be checked with a continuity buzzer or alternatively you could desolder that part to confirm like I had to do with the op-amp. It can also help to have a light source nearby so occasionally I would just place the board in front of the light source and it would reveal the tracks in a clear way as long as there was no ground plane blocking the light. I slowly worked my way until I had the whole circuit mapped and there were no more tracks left to be traced on the images. Now I had a complete schematic of the circuit but I still needed to understand how the circuit interfaces with the main power supply circuit, how it does the measurements and how it applies control signals and within what ranges. Luckily the interface with the power supply is pretty simple we have a seven pin interface and the signals are all labeled on the PCB. We have starting from the left on off control constant voltage plus 5 volts, ground, constant current, voltage sense and current sense. So our board is powered with 5 volts from an auxiliary 5 volts power supply located on the main power supply board. 
that voltage is then stepped down through this uh, 3.3 volt uh, LDO for the microcontroller but the op amp is powered from 5 volts to have a better swing on the output. This is just a uh, Jelly Bean LM358 op amp which would not be capable of uh, true rail to rail output if it were powered from 3.3 volts. The input signals to our board are the CS and uh, VS signals current sense and voltage sense they mean, which are already conditioned and amplified on the main power supply board. Now for the current sense signal I measured between 1.3 for 0 amps and 10.6 volts for 5 amps and this is then further stepped down with a resistor divider before being measured by the 10 bit ADC inside the microcontroller. For the voltage sense signal I measured between 0 volts and 17.6 volts for the maximum output of the power supply. Once again this is a further step down to the appropriate level for ADC conversion. An interesting observation here is that the uh, filter capacitor for the current measurement for the current sense line is not populated and maybe they wanted to avoid reducing the uh, uh, bandwidth which would be the effect of having the capacitor in there or maybe the signal is already well filtered before arriving at the front panel uh, PCB. Then we have our control signals, the on off which is a 0 or 5 volt signal turns the power supply output on or off. We have CC and uh, CV control, the uh, set current and set voltage and they range between 0 and 3.3 volts. These start as uh, PWN signals uh, from the uh, microcontroller uh, at 1 kilohertz, then they go through a low pass filter and get converted to DC which is buffered through the op amp. By varying the duty cycle 0 to 100%, uh, you generate a 0 to 3.3 volt signal at the output of the op amp. And now after understanding these signals it's easy to imagine a new board that would replace this uh, front panel entirely and it would be a uh, plug and play solution. It would probably be, be based around uh, an STM32 microcontroller and use something like uh, this uh, 2 inch TFT for display Hopefully I can find one with good viewing angles and good contrast. The only challenge for me would be the firmware for the STM32. I really don't like writing firmware so maybe there is someone who is good at that and is interested in working with me on this project. If you're that guy just reach out to me, maybe leave a comment and maybe we can get this uh, project started. If you found this video useful I would appreciate if you would smash that like button below. You can also support the channel on Patreon with as little as $1 per month. And if you haven't seen the review video of this power supply you can click right here to watch it and you'll also find links to this power supply in the description below the video. I will also link the schematic and reverse engineering info I produced. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.